Factoring trinomials is truly the heart of Algebra 1. That's what we're going to take a look at today. Essentially, we are doing this multiplying of binomials in reverse. So to set it up, I want to remember how we multiplied these binomials together. We would distribute that 3x through, giving us 3x squared minus 3x. Then we would distribute the 2 through, giving us plus 2x minus 2. And then we combine terms in the middle to get 3x squared minus x minus 2. Now I want to notice, as we compare the answer to the question, or the problem, what I want to notice is the first terms of 3x times x would always multiply to the first term of 3x squared. Similarly, the last terms of 2 and negative 1 would always multiply to the last term of negative 2. The trick would be to check the middle term to get it to work out exactly as we need it. So there's going to be some guess and check involved in this. But here's an example, x squared minus x minus 2. And we're going to try and factor it with a little guess and check. Well, we know the x squared comes from the first term times the first term. x squared, I would guess, is x times x. The last term needs to multiply to be negative 2. Well, the only way to get negative 2 is 2 times 1. Not sure which one needs to be negative, but let's guess. Let's guess negative 2 and positive 1. Now we'll check the middle term. Multiplying the outside, x times 1 is x. Multiplying the inside, negative 2x. x minus 2x is negative x. Exactly like we wanted in the middle term. That tells me my answer is correct. So what we did is we kind of used an educated guess to make the first terms work out. x squared was x times x. Then we did an educated guess to get the, second, the last terms to work out. Negative 2 was negative 2 times 1. And then we checked the middle term. Check that outside and inside added together. And if that middle term came out to what we wanted it to be, the negative x, then we knew we had the right answer. If it didn't work, we might have needed to go back and try a little more guess and check until we finally got to the right answer. Let's try a few examples and see how we do on these. x squared minus x. 5x plus 6. Well, to get the x squared, it's probably going to be x times x. Now, the 6, there's several ways to get 6. It could be 2 times 3. It could be 6 times 1. We're going to guess one of them. How about 2 times 3? If we made them both positive, and we check it. On the outside, we have positive 3x. On the inside, we have positive 2x. 3x plus 2x is positive 5x. We don't want positive 5x. We want negative 5x. So maybe to switch that, we'll switch the signs. Try them with both negatives. Now, on the outside, we've got negative 3x. On the inside, we've got negative 2x. And negative 3x and negative 2x is negative 5x. Our answer is correct. The second example looks very similar to the first example. The only difference is now there's a negative 6 at the end. Is that going to change things significantly? Let's see. x squared is x times x. 
6 might be 2 times 3. We want it to be negative, so maybe positive 2 and negative 3. Notice if we do that, on the outside we get negative 3x. On the inside we get positive 2x. Negative 3 plus positive 3 is a single positive x. That is nowhere near the negative 5x we want. So we need to do something a little more dramatic than just changing the signs. We need different numbers. Another way to get 6 is 6 times 1. Maybe negative 6 plus 1. Now on the outside, we've got a positive 1x. On the inside, we have negative 6x. And that matches the middle term of negative 5x. That means we have the correct answer. Notice these were very similar looking, but the signs made a big difference. We have to pay attention to the signs. You can't factor trinomials like my grandmother drives. She doesn't pay any attention to the signs. Signs make a big difference when factoring. Pay very careful attention to them. All right, here's another problem, a couple examples. 6x squared plus 10x minus 24. What's the first thing we're going to do? If you said factor out the GCF of 2, you are correct. Don't forget that greatest common factor. Check every problem or it'll sneak up on you. When we factor out the 2, we're left with 3x squared plus 5x minus 12. And now we're ready to continue factoring from here. So that 2 is going to stay out front. 3x squared. 3x squared is probably 3x times x. Negative 12. We can get negative 12 several ways. Uh, 12 could be 3 times 4. It could be 2 times 6. Or it could be 1 times 12. And then we can swap the order, because switching the order is going to make a difference. 4, 3, 2, 6, and 12, 1. To kind of help us, though, since we've got a 3 in this first factor, we can't have a common factor of 3. So we need something that doesn't work with 3 to match with it. So maybe the 4. 4 times 3 is 12. And I'm going to guess the 4 to be negative and the 3 to be positive. Again, this is just a guess and check game. Don't be afraid to guess and try it and see if it works. On the outside, 3x times 3 is 9x. On the inside, negative 4x. 9 minus 4x is 5x, which does match the center. So we know we've got the correct answer. 2 times 3x minus 4 times x plus 3. This next problem has a minor typo. There should be an x at the end of it. I'm going to add an x there. So now the problem is 12x cubed plus 22x squared minus 4x. And what are we going to do first? If you said the GCF of 2x, you are correct. Factor out 2x, we're left with 6x squared plus 11x minus 2. Now with that 2x in front, we're ready to try some guess and check to factor the 6x squared plus 11x minus 2. 6x squared might be 2x times 3x. 2 might be 2 times 1. I can't put the 2 in the first factor because that would have a GCF in the first factor. No GCFs allowed. So let's try 1 times 2. And we'll make the first one negative just to test it out. Let's see if that works. Outside, 2x times 2 is 4x. Inside, negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. That's just going to be a single x. That doesn't work. We 
We can't do much more with the one times two. But what about the six x squared? The six x squared could have been six x times x. Let's see if that works better for us. On the outside, 6x plus times 2 is 12x. On the inside, negative 1 times x is negative x. 12x minus x is 11x. Matches that middle term. We've got our solution. So as you see, there's definitely some guess and check involved. It's OK to make a mistake as long as you learn from that mistake and keep persevering forward. Check for that GCF first. And then if your middle term is just off by a sign, swap the signs. If your middle term is way off, try changing the numbers and seeing if that works better. Always keep moving forward till you find your solution. We can still use our zero product rule in order to solve problems with trinomials. Again, we first have to factor, and then we can set each factor equal to 0. Ooh, but on this one, did you notice? There's a GCF in there. Let's get the GCF out of there of 3 times x squared minus, minus 12 equals 0. Now that that GCF is out of the way, the numbers are smaller. It's going to be a lot easier to factor. x squared is x times x. 12, you might try 6 times 2 or 4 times 3. We'll try a negative 4 and a positive 3 to see if that works. On the outside, we've got 3x. On the inside, we've got negative 4x, and that adds up to negative x, which matches the center. We know we've got the right answer. But we're not done, because we know this one actually equals something. So we can figure out what x equals. We can set each factor equal to 0. 3 equals 0 is our first factor. Well, there's no variables, and that doesn't make sense. So we'll dump that x minus 4 equals 0. x plus 3 equals 0. Quickly solve by adding 4. x equals 4, or subtracting 3, the other answer is negative 3. If x is equal to 4 or negative 3, we have our solution. The second equation, very similar, but before we can use the zero product rule, it must be equal to zero first. Then we factor. Then we set each factor equal to zero. So we've got to get the 3 out of the way by subtracting 3 from both sides. Get the x out of the way by adding x to both sides. It's kind of messy. I'll put the minus 3 at the end here so that like terms are kind of lining up. So we have 2x squared minus 5x, a terrible 5, minus 3 equals 0. And this can factor with some quick guess and check. 2x squared is 2x times x. 3 could be 3 times 1 or 1 times 3. So we kind of have to try it and see what happens. Let's try 3 times 1. We'll try negative positive. 2x times 1 is 2x. And negative 3x. Pay attention to the signs, because that's only negative x. Not even close. So let's switch the 3 and 1. 1 and 3. 
Now on the outside, 2x times 3 is 6x. And on the inside, negative 1x. That equals a positive 5x. We're getting closer. We want negative 5x. We have positive 5x. That tells me I need to switch the signs, make it a plus 1 and a minus 3. Notice I very rarely get it on the first guess. I just keep guessing and keep moving forward. Don't give up. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x. And plus 1x, that's negative. That matches. We know it's correct. Now that we have it correctly factored, we can set each factor equal to 0. 2x plus 1 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. Two-step equation, subtract 1, 2x equals negative 1. Divide by 2, x is equal to negative 1 half for our first possible answer. Add 3 to get x equals 3 for our second possible answer. And we solved these trinomials by first setting them equal to 0 and then factoring. Factoring trinomials takes a little bit of guess and checks. You will guess wrong several times. But as long as you keep guessing and trying different arrangements, you'll start to find out how these go together very quickly. So give them a go on your homework. Let your instructor know if you have any questions. And good luck as you work on them.